He's the ginger Green Lantern. He's the bowl cut Green Lantern. It's time to talk about Guy Gardner because your geek history lesson is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason Emerald Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character construct or wing, ring bearer from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. And this week we are returning to the Green Lantern Corps, a group from which... Uh, we have taught many lessons for in the past. We have taught many lessons in the past, but a lot of people, uh, three exactly, have suggested that we need to do a geek history lesson on Guy Gardner. Cheers to Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner, the Green Lantern. And the people that suggested that are Katie Campbell, Eric Oberholzer, and at Hinkleman Mitch. So uh, thank you so much for suggesting that. Uh, if you want to suggest a future Geek History Lesson like them, you can go to where, Ashley? You can go to geekhistorylesson.com, facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, or on Twitter at GHL Podcast. There is a whole bunch of ways to be in touch in all of those places. Yes, and if you're wondering, you know, I've never heard of this Guy Gardner guy before. Well, don't worry. That's exactly what this episode is going to teach you. So uh, mm -hmm. also, um, just to let you know, if you're looking for, you like this podcast, you like GHL. You like podcasts from us. Maybe you want more podcasts from us. Don't forget, you can go check out some extra podcasts that we have, including the personal and fun Jason and Ashley's Excellent Adventures. That podcast you can only hear if you support us on Patreon.com slash Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N. And now to the Tencent origin, the first part of this podcast, not a personal podcast that you can only hear on Patreon. Yes, the first part of the podcast where Professor Jason is going to lay down all the who's it's and what's it's and important facts in case you go to a cool Lantern Corps party and someone asks you what's up with that Guy Gardner guy. Guy is known as Guy Darren with an I. Gardner, a.k.a. Warrior, a.k.a. The Grinder, a.k.a. Green Lantern, a.k.a. The Crazy One, a.k.a. Green Lantern of Sector 2814.3, a.k.a. The Red Lantern, a.k.a. The Gardener, a.k.a. Sharia Tome, a.k.a. Guy Joseph Gardner. Oh, yeah. They've changed his middle name a couple of times, a.k.a. Honor Guard of the Green Lantern Corps. He, of course, is a DC Comics character. He's half human and half Voldarian, depending on the retcon. What is a Voldarian? Well, I'm glad you asked, because they are a humanoid race of elite warriors with shape-shifting abilities similar to the Durlins. Ashley, do you have any idea who the Durlins are? No. They are the race of Chameleon Boy from the Legion of Superheroes, oh, the little orange guys with the antennae. That's so funny, because in my brain, I was like, don't say that you don't care who the Durlins are, yeah. and then you made me care, because Chameleon Boy's dope. Yeah. Now, the Voldarians, which is what Guy is half of, Not dope. they can fashion their limbs <laughs> into weapons, as well as project internally generated energy into munitions. They can basically make mind bullets. Um, or skin Honestly, bullets. though, seems like someone whose inherent power sets would be very, very conducive to wielding a Green Lantern. That's right? correct. With the hard light constructs. Well, you see, the Green Lantern Guy Gardner was born a terran Voldarian hybrid. He was the first known case of a successful human-alien offspring of this species. However, his extraterrestrial gene was remained rendered dormant by means of genetic alteration, the full side effects will remain unrevealed. And if that sounds like a god of gobbledygook, don't worry, we'll get into it because, dear God. But we're still in the Tencent origin. Yes. Guy Gardner, of course, was created by John Broom and Gil Kane. His first appearance was in Green Lantern Volume 2, Issue number 59 in March of 1968. He, of course, was born on Earth. His team affiliations have been the Green Lantern Corps, the Justice League, the Red Lantern Corps, the Dark Stars and the Justice League International. And of course, his abilities are all derived from the powers of the Green Lantern power ring, including his uniform, his flight, his force field, his space travel and most importantly, his hard light constructs. Now, he's been portrayed by Matthew Settle in the Justice League animated series, and also, more importantly, Diedrich Bader in the Green Lantern the animated series. We're big Diedrich Bader fans. It's actually <laughs> one of my favorite uh, Guy Gardner appearances. Nice. Alright, now we're going to move into the meet cute Where we stole a term from romantic comedy writing, and we are going to tell you where we first meet the character and how cute it was. Ashley, I need to know. I must know. I am dying to know. How do you know Guy Gardner? When did you first meet this guy? 
I honestly don't know because I hate him. I uh, I don't like Guy Gardner at all. Uh, I think he's terrible. I would assume. Well, this isn't going to be not be a fun lesson. You taught Damien. We did fine. I assumed it was probably Justice League, the animated series, Mm -hmm. because that seems to track. But like, I have no memory of the first encounter with this character. I've I've just always been like, ugh, this guy. The Green Lantern with the vest. Great. (laughs) So not a a Guy Gardner fan uh, over here. But that's okay. Jason, where did you first meet cute Guy Gardner? I met Guy Gardner in the first trade paperback I ever bought, The Death of Superman. Yeah. Because Guy appears in it. uh, He's one of his periods where he is not a Green Lantern. He wears a leather jacket. He has a big bowl cut. He has a giant G on his belt. And he has a yellow power ring. And he has a bowl cut. And he gets his ass kicked by Doomsday. And at that time, I hated him. But to be honest with you, now I actually really love him. So, yeah. There is one version of Guy Gardner that I like. But I think we're going to get to it in a little bit. So, we'll talk about it then. Okay. There's one version I like. Hey, listeners and mine university students. Let me interrupt the podcast really quickly to tell you about our new comic book, Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio. Yes, we have finally made a sequel to our Ringo-nominated all-ages adventure comic book series co-written by myself and Ashley Victoria Robinson. And the sequel is now on Kickstarter. You can go to jupiterjetcomic.com and support the sequel of our all sci-fi hero genre jetpack girl adventure. Now, let me tell you a little bit about it. 17-year-old superhero, Jupiter Jet, has kept her city, Olympic Heights, safe for the last year. Her flying skills are unmatched. The city loves her, but she wants to do more. When the mysterious Black Flyer arrives in orbit and threatens her world, Jupiter Jet finds out that her hero skills may not be up to the task. Does Jupiter Jet have the courage to save her entire planet? Well, we'll soon find out in the second volume of the Ringo Award-nominated series by ourselves. It is our comic book that we are kickstarting over there and we have a lot of great awards including you can get the book itself you can get some prints by wonder woman artist nicholas scott you can get some prints by teen titans artist john boy myers and a whole array of comic book professionals so if you know independent comic books are a love for the heart and uh you know we need your help over there at jupiterjetcomic.com to make it happen so come on over come on down fly on down fly on over and help us make more of our comic books pre-order the book for yourself jupiter jet and the forgotten radio over at jupiterjetcomic.com also really quickly i want to welcome any of our new listeners that might be listening to this episode over at the collider factory slash collider podcast little area of the internet if you're new to this podcast welcome we hope you stick around and you can go find our whole back catalog at geekhistorylesson.com all right now i gotta throw it back to myself back to you jason all right now we're to the history 101 the main meat the main uh soy product vegan meat of the lesson where professor jason is going to teach you everything about the rowdiest green lantern guy gardner although guy gardner was created in the 1960s he was reinvented by Steve Englehart and Joe Statton as a parody of the red-blooded American male. And that has remained his main identity into the modern age of comics. He's now sort of been adjusted to dude bro football jock by Jeff Johns, very similar to a Steve Lombard of the Superman supporting cast member, if you know who I'm referring to. Now, per Steve Englehart, in a 2016 magazine article all about Guy Gardner, He said that Staten's design for Guy Gardner was based on the character Major Ronald Merrick from the TV series The Jewel in the Crown. You know, that famous one. As (laughs) Staten saw Merrick's entitlement and resentment as a parallel to Guy Gardner. Now, Staten also designed Gardner's famous, uh, um, you know, his sort of collar vest uniform. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, He also designed that as well. Cool. So So they they basically made Guy Gardner who we know and love. Exactly. Today. exactly. <laughs> now to the fictional character biography. Let's do it. Guy was born and raised in Baltimore to Roland and Peggy Gardner. Uh, Roland, of course, was an abusive alcoholic and beat his son regularly. Uh, Guy also had an older brother named Mace. We're not really going to be talking about Mace that much. Okay. Talk about the worst names for kids, right? Mace and Guy. And Guy. Maybe it's just advice to Mace guys. 
think that was a stretch, but sure. Uh, like many of us, Guy sought escape in the pages of comic books, and his favorite was a comic book named General Glory. Now, fun fact, General Glory's sidekick, Ernie's haircut, directly inspires the high and tight sort of bowl cut thing that we're used to see Guy sport. And another fact, this was actually the General Gloryness of it all. This was a Keith Giffen and J.M. DeMattius Justice League International retcon. Oh, I didn't know that. That's very yep. cool. It, when you think about it, it actually fits really into uh, Keith Giffen's mm-hmm. sort of goofier writing. I like it. Which I actually really like. A uh, guy eventually became a juvenile delinquent before going on to play football at the University of Michigan. That's why he says go Wolverine sometimes. Uh, until he gets too injured to continue. And he wound up graduating with a degree in psychology. What? Yeah, Guy really? Gardner really? holds a bachelor's degree in psychology, Ashley. I was going to say something unkind, but I'll keep it to myself. Yeah. Now, his football injury is actually mentioned repeatedly throughout many Guy Gardner stories. So it's obviously something that really stuck with Kai, mm. uh, Guy. Excuse me. I almost said Kai. Kyle mm, Rayner? No. no. <laughs> uh, now, Ashley, I have to ask you, at the University of Michigan, uh, Guy actually became good friends with a fellow student there, a fellow student by the name of John Henry Irons. Do you know who that is? Steel. Yes. John Hinckley. <laughs> yes. I, I like that. I like that little sort of retcon a lot, also because it Guy is very involved in the death of Superman storyline. I didn't know and that so, they were friendly. And so. so is John Henry Irons. Well, yes, as he is one of the reign of the titular Superman. Yes, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if they're very friendly once they became superheroes, but they knew each other before. That's cool. So I can accept that. I don't know if there's ever been a story where they're like, you're Steel, you're Guy. Well, then there should be. DC Comics can uh, hire us to write it at any time. If there is, I haven't read it. Mm-hmm. So, some of Guy Gardner's early career choices, including being a social welfare caseworker for prison inmates as they adjusted to life on the outside, and he was also a special education teacher. Now, you might be like, wait a minute, this doesn't sound like the guy I know. I definitely do feel that way. We're getting there. Okay. Also, if you remember from our Hal Jordan Geek History Lesson episodes, or episodes um, 202 and 203 specifically, were, by Jason. where a lot of times we were like, I'm a pilot! It's one of my favorite jokes. Now, that joke was because of the Emerald Dawn Hal Jordan retcon, where Hal was a drunk, and Hal went to prison for driving drunk. Well, guess what? In prison, Guy Gardner was his caseworker. Shut up. It was the first time they ever oh met. God. Now, because of this job and how hard it was, Guy lost his temper, and he was fired from being a, a caseworker for prisoner inmates. Mm. So, yes, because one, one must be common understanding. Mm-hmm, but that is the first time that Guy Gardner met Hal Jordan. Interesting. Very interesting. Soon, Abin Sir crashed to Earth. Who's that, Ashley? He's a pink alien who crashes to Earth and gives Hal Jordan his power ring. That is correct. But he didn't mean to give Hal Jordan his power but ring. Jason, that's what happens. I saw the movie. Incorrect. Uh, and the less said about that movie, the better. So, Abin so Sir... In his last act as Green Lantern, used his Green Lantern power ring to scan all of the people of Earth. The ring was to search for one that was honest as well as a bean without fear. And the ring found two who were worthy of the ring. Bing, bing. Its first choice was Guy Gardner. Womp, womp, womp. What are these sound effects? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> his first choice was Guy Gardner, but Guy Gardner was too far away. So the Green Lantern ring is lazy. No, actually, if you remember the storyline, Abin Sur was grievously wounded in about moments from death. So he only had as much time to get a replacement. Although typically the ring just automatically finds yeah. a replacement. So the ring was too lazy to fly to Guy Gardner. Well, was, okay, Abin, so it went to Abin Sir wanted Alton. to show the guy how the job works. He wanted to be like, the donuts are over there. This is where the good coffee is. Abin Sir is not a homer. <laughs> Don't ever go to Vega 3. So he, he had to make sure he had to tell these people this. All right, so Hal was closer and drunker, so he picked Hal. So Hal was closer, so the ring chose Hal. Now, Hal eventually found out about Guy, and he actually always kept Guy in the back of his mind in case he ever needed a replacement. And there's actually a great Dan Jurgen storyline in his Booster Gold run, the second volume, where Booster Gold travels back in time and convinces Guy to go visit his dying father so that Hal would get the ring first, intentionally making mm. sure that Guy... Guy is further away from Abin Sir. 
Shady. It's a great storyline, actually. You shady ape. Uh, this will not be in the recommended reading, but if you have not read that second volume of Brewster Gold, you're missing out. Yeah, Brewster Gold's great. Um, Ashley, what is the one quality that Guy Gardner is known for? Being mouthy. I'll give that to you. His temper. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, being was, an ass. I was like, are you going literal or are you going to be like, no, having red hair? No. Because you do that to me. So well, time. you see, as I said earlier, this guy Gardner isn't that bad. Yeah, so yeah. let's learn how he got his famous temper because comics decided that needed an origin story. Did he get a kick in the head? Swift kick in the head? Ah, oh, you're pretty close. <laughs> okay. See, Hal Jordan. <laughs> I'm a pilot. Hal Jordan. You also kind of remind me of when you do your impression of the Flash intro and you say I'm Barry Allen. When I do my what, what? Jason does this impression of the Flash TV show introduction where he says I'm Barry Allen and mm-hmm. I'm the fastest man. And the way Jason says it is very similar to the way he says I'm uh, I Violet. See. <laughs> I see. Uh, see, how, Joke only for Ashley. See, Hal knew that Guy was his replacement. Mm-hmm. And an earthquake took Guy out of commission. So because of this earthquake, Hal had to make sure that he had to find another replacement, and he made John Stewart mm. his replacement, who, as we know, is the African-American architect Marine Green Lantern. But when the time came, Hal finally came to Guy and said, you should be my replacement guy. You're the guy. Yep, you're the guy, Guy. <laughs> so Hal leaves him with a new power ring and Hal's old Green Lantern battery. Mm. What Hal didn't know, though, is that he was actually having a problem with his old lantern. And as a result of this, his power battery explodes. It explodes right in Guy's face, causes a temporal incident, and opens the dimensional barriers to the Phantom Zone. Where Guy got trapped in for several years because he got tortured by General Zod. Ashley, in case someone doesn't know, and mm-hmm. somebody hasn't seen Superman one, and hasn't somebody hasn't seen Terran Stamp said, You will kneel before me one day, Joel. Or Man of Steel. You or Krypton. And your ass. Um what is the Phantom Zone? The Phantom Zone is a prison dimension that I want to say is primarily used by the Kryptonians, but it feels like everybody else in the entire gosh darn galaxy has access to it. And it is, as Jason referred to, probably most popularly known for housing General Zod and his lady friends. Mm-hmm. It was actually discovered by jor I didn't know that. Yep. Yes. Well, you might be asking at this point, if Guy Gardner is in the Phantom Zone, then how does this lesson continue? Well, well Jason, if he's in the Phantom Zone, how can this lesson continue? Well... I was getting to that. Good. See, when everybody thought <laughs> Guy was dead, oh, Hal Jordan hooked up with Guy Gardner's fiance by the name of Carrie Limbo. Yep. Well, Her name is Carrie Limbo. Guy is literally in limbo. Also, if you refer back to our Hal Jordan episode, Hal's a bad person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a pilot. <laughs> I'm a go. Hey. I'm Hal Jordan. Hi, I'm Miss Limbo. Ah, hey. I do a really good limbo. Do you want to limbo with me, Hal Jordan? I got to finish this drink. (laughs) Um, I think you got a dead boyfriend, right? Yeah, I don't know where he is. Okay, we should get married. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> That's basically what happens. Um, Jason's actually looking at a stuffed Hal Jordan as he does the impression. So you see, because Hal Jordan is terrible, he proposed to Carrie. Mm-hmm. And Guy Gardner could see all of these events from the Phantom Zone. So his rage built up. And it's led to Guy to try to torture Carrie and Hal during the wedding using telepathy. No joke. He's Silver Age telepathy? comics are fun, <laughs> friends. Um, after being released from the Phantom Zone, uh, with the torture he suffered there, coupled with having been hit recently by a bus after he gets out of the Phantom Zone. <laughs> I'm not joking. So you get out of those little silver phallic things mm-hmm. that they send people to the Phantom Zone in, or that saran rep shieldy thing. You step onto the street of insert fictional DC city here and you get slammed by a bus like Tony from skin. It's not immediate, but it's pretty close. It's funnier if it's immediate. Um, and he gets <laughs> he goes into a coma. Oh, I almost feel bad for him. Yep. And he goes into the coma for an undisclosed number of years Comments. where it was then discovered that he had brain damage. No kidding. And then 
crisis on infinite Earths happened. Ashley, what's that? Hey, well, if you really want to know, you can go uh, back and check out our Crisis Club episodes. Episodes 282 to 287. Basically, DC was like, there's too many Earths. We only want one Earth. So they created the monitor and the anti-monitor and the anti-monitor ate it and Harbinger waved and he pooped out one universe. Basically, it was a giant cosmic event that got rid of the DC multiverse. Mm -hmm. Um, So during this event, the Guardians of the Universe, the little blue guys that are the boss of the Green Lanterns yep. split into two factions. The Guardians of the Universe, they detected this terrible crisis and six of the Guardians felt that they should not interfere and then the other one said, no, we should. So the ones that decided to interfere in the crisis, they created their own power battery separate of the giant Green Lantern power battery and they began assembling a small Green Lantern strike task force. Mm. The first Green Lantern they chose was Guy Gardner. It would have been so funny if you said, like, uh, I don't know, Saronic Natu. No, no, no. Chip. <laughs> so Gardner's brain damage at this point had manifested himself into an arrogant, violent, unstable, and often childish new personality. And he also believed himself to be the last true Green Lantern, superior to all the other Green Lanterns, including Hal Jordan. So Guy was given the task to recruit this task force, and the members of his task force were basically powerful villains of the team universe mm. and both Hal Jordan and John Stewart the other Green Lanterns prevented Gardner from completing his mission see I mentioned earlier that Guy Gardner is the Green Lantern of sector 2814.3 because 2814 is the sector of Earth 2814.1 is Hal 2814.2 is John 3 is Guy 4 is oh Kyle Rayner we're gonna get to him who's 6 I don't know that there's a sex. Simon? No, it's actually Jessica. Jessica beats Simon? No, Simon beats Jessica. What are you confused about here? He comes before Jessica. Yes. So six would be Jessica. Yeah. Yeah. I said six was Jessica. Whatever. What are you confused about here? I, are, you, are you trying to do a joke that I'm not getting? No, I'm not. I was, <laughs> oh, okay. I, no, I'm just... I think I said six I feel I like I have Guy Gardner's brain damage right now. You know... <laughs> I'm really restraining from making a joke about brain damage because it's really serious. It's really not a laughing matter. But they kind of use it as an excuse to turn Guy into a butthead. They used it to make him a, to retcon in, into yeah, an ass. Yeah, yeah in a way that um, with other characters, they just retcon them and they get new person. Like, like New 52 Superman is a little angrier mm-hmm. than the Superman that we're used to up to that point. Look, I'm going to say this. At this point, Guy Gardner has been... Um, Thrown in, he 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 was he was suffered an earthquake and went into a coma. Uh-huh. He was thrown into the Phantom Zone and tortured by a Kryptonian, and also he was hit, hit by, by a, a bus. bus and went back into a coma. At this point, I you were lucky he's not a serial killer. At this point, I think his anger is totally justified. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? Fair. You've yeah. given me a new appreciation yeah, there for you Guy go. Gardner. You know? I think we'd all be this mad if those things happened to us. Yeah, and he lives in a country without socialized medicine. I think we'd be, ba- we'd be mad if only one of those things had happened to us. But he mm-hmm. got all three. hit the trifecta of crappy deals. We're getting hit in the head. Yeah. Now, after the crisis, the Guardians, along with the Zamorans, who are basically the controllers of the Star Sapphires, they left the universe to create the next generation of Guardians. And Guy Gardner was placed under the care of the remaining guardian turned mortal, Appa Ale Apsa, who later went on to become the Mad Guardian. Spoilers for a story that happened in the 80s. Um, <laughs> now, on the planet Maltus, in order to teach Gardner the way of the core, a situation with Gardner resented. Now, Guy Gardner eventually escaped and returned to Earth, but was recaptured by Appa Ale Apsa with the assistance of two core honor guards intending to reclaim Guy Gardner's power ring. At the request of his old fiance, Carrie Limbo, Hal Jordan pleaded on Gardner's behalf for his freedom and was granted with no return of gratitude from Gardner. So Hal Jordan sort of saved Guy Gardner and Guy Gardner was like, eh, buzz off. I mean, honestly, though, like if one of your close buddies slept with your girl and proposed to her while you were trapped somewhere, Mm -hmm. would you ever forget? Would you be nice to him? No. I don't feel bad for Hal. Yep. Then I was hit by a bus. I especially wouldn't forgive him. Yeah, truly. Now, after the defeat and death of the Mad Guardian, who, of course, as I said, was Appa Ali Apsa. I keep saying that name because it is an important Guardian character in Green Lantern lore. And so few of the Guardians have names. Mm Mm-hmm. 
The Guardians returned and assigned Guy Gardner to be the official Green Lantern of Sector 2814, while they assigned Hal Jordan to recruit new core members in the universe. So mm. Guy's on Earth, and he's the big Green Lantern at the time. Cool. So Guy Gardner became a founding member of the Justice League International. Whoa, ha, 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 ha. Yes. Now, this uh, happened after the JLA disbanded in the 1986 storyline Legends, which was by Len Wein, John Ostrander, and John Byrne. Talk about wow. a power hit. Wow, murderer's hitting. row yep. of talent. Now, Ashley, we call this the Boa Ha 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 League. Yeah. This is sort of the Keith Giffen run where they took the league a little bit sillier. I know this is a league that you are very fond of. Yeah, in fact, um, I have a a collage of postcards of famous comic book covers, and one of them is a Boa Ha Ha Just League cover, and Guy is front and center mm-hmm. on that. So I want to ask you, Ashley, mm. can you name how many, <laughs> how many... Of the original members. Of well, the original the, members. For issue one members, because there are plenty that added. Can you name? And just to let you know, there are one, two, Twelve. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, a traditional Justice League is only seven. Um, this is the Boahaha League. Guy Gardner. That is correct. Ted Cord. Uh, Blue Beetle, that is correct. Booster Gold. Uh, Booster Gold is not in the original lineup. Okay. He comes in like, I think, issue four or five. Fire and Ice. Fire and Ice are not in the original lineup. Uh, 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 Rocket Red. Not in the original lineup. Uh, I I don't know. (laughs) You're missing a whole bunch of, they're all in that cover you're talking about. Give me a hint. Batman. That Batman is the team leader. Batman's on that yep. cover. Mm-hmm. Give me a hint. Uh, she screams a lot. Banshee? No. Silver Silver Sink Cloud? No. Black Canary? Correct. Oh, yeah, she is. You have four of the nine. Give me another hint. Um, <laughs> His costume is yellow and blue. Booster Gold? No, not in the original <laughs> time. <laughs> he uh, is a, a magic guy. Booster Gold. He's a magic guy? Booster Gold has nothing to do with magic. All about time travel and sci-fi. John Constantine? Nope. Blue <laughs> and yellow. <laughs> wears a big helmet. A helmet? He wears a helmet. He's blue and, and he's yellow. And he's magic? And he's magic. And he lives in a giant tower. Oh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Fate. <laughs> I was like, how many he's more clues could I give yellow, he's gold. He's yellow and blue. Bo- uh, a Booster Gold. Uh, Dr. Fate. Mm-hmm. This was a character that was first introduced in Crisis on Infinite Earths. It was a female version. Avenger. Nope. A Dr. Light. F- yep. There you go. <laughs> um, you have two more. I'm doing okay. Um, this this character, this superhero, loves cookies. Oh, Martian Manhunter. That is correct. And this last person uh, recently had a son in a recent storyline. Superman? No. <laughs> Lois Lane? No. Why would Lois Lane be a member of the Justice League International? I don't know. She's You love her. She could do it. I would, but she's not a superhero. Um, this character is a new god. Oh, Scott Free. Yep, Mr. Miracle. So there you go. That is the it's original It's so line. funny because so as, as we figured them all we out, in a I could big see square. the poster like coming into. It is Batman, mm-hmm. Blue, Black Canary, Blue Beetle. Uh, oh, I forgot one. Uh, Captain Marvel. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Captain Marvel. Dr. Fate, Dr. Light, Guy Gardner, Martian Manor, Mr. Miracle. That is the original lineup. All those other characters you mentioned come later. Yes. So I want to ask you this. Okay. Ashley, even though we went in a big roundabout and probably lost half of our listeners. I think it was fun. I think people liked it. (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) Um, What do you think the legacy of the Justice League International is because oh, I'm, man. I'm not going to talk much about the Justice League International because I almost feel that that should be a Justice League International geek history lesson. I would love to teach. By the that. way, everybody, we love the Justice League International. We have the omnibus of Volume One. Yes, so, we do. Um, actually, what do you think the legacy of this league? Because this league is very memorable, and comic creators and writers and fans still talk about this run now. I mean, I think um, if you're if you're sort of looking at the current sphere or, or currently what we're doing in pop culture, I think the legacy of it is very much blue and gold. Like, the thing that everyone loves that comes out of this specifically is the tone shift for uh, Booster and Beetle. Mm, but I think that happens for all the characters here. It does, but they're the breakout stars of it. Sure. Uh, like, if you... If you if you took this question to anyone who would know what the Justice League International is, the first two people everyone's going to think are Booster and Beetle. 
Like they are the faces mm. of this team. I think what this does in terms of like if we're looking at it from like a more meta perspective and in terms of what it does for storytelling and Justice League stories in particular, it makes it okay to bring back some humor mm-hmm. because this was the first like the, humorous the, run. The bronze on the age of comics is very much a shift away from the silliness of the Silver Age. And it's where we start to get, where we edge into what's considered modern comics. Teeth. Yeah, which Matthew Peterson likes, likes to call, comics. I'm going to armor my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and most of that is through the auspices of Alan Moore and Frank Miller. Yep. And this is very much a rejection of that. Mm. But it is still taking everything that is happening to them as seriously. But... We're allowed to have a couple punchlines here and there. And I think that's where the real legacy comes from, because I think there's a lot of books that are striving to be this balance and they don't they can't do it. And I actually think uh, Giffen and Dematius are a big part of that, because if I was to sit here and think of tonally, what do I think is closest to that? It's Scooby Apocalypse, which is kind of they also write, which they also write, which is kind of the same thing. You should explain what Scooby Apocalypse is just in case anybody doesn't uh, know. Scooby Apocalypse is an excellent book with questionable art. The it's later on book. it goes, Howard yeah. Porter does the art in the beginning and it's truly stunning. If it weren't digital, I would have bought a page from it. Um, where it imagines what if the Scooby gang came together in their adult life during a zombie apocalypse. Mm-hmm. An actual real zombie yes. apocalypse. And yeah. it is set in a more modern, a less 50s idealized world. Um, they all have real jobs. They're not friends going into this. But it takes itself very seriously. The stakes are real. It is life or death. People die constantly. It's a very mature audience book. But there's a joke every few pages. And I think and it's written very much, I think, in the Boahaha style. I agree. Of this book. Yeah. I agree. And I think that's why we call it the Boahaha Justice League, because it reminded us that we could have jokes and still tell a really incredible story because JLI at its best, I think, can go toe to toe with any Justice League. Um yeah, at its worst, it gets a little bit silly. So I'm sorry, that was a really long-winded answer to your question, but I just really like this team. And uh, I think this is the best team for Guy to be on. Yeah, sure. All right, let me let me tell you a little bit about it. In his time with the Justice League International, Guy Gardner resented Batman's obvious leadership of, of the group. Of course he did. Going so far to challenge the Dark Knight to a fist fight, and Batman downed Guy with one punch after Guy took off his ring. And actually, I actually think we should share a panel from that on the Twitter because if it, right, it is making one of the, a note of it. I've it, seen it before. It's it funny. Is, it is one of the most famous panels in all of comic books. Uh, the other members left him lying on the floor, and when Guy woke up, he banged his head on a console and knocked himself out. So uh, this is like two more instances of probable this is brain damage? Two more, so we're up to five? We're up to five obvious grievous wounds to his head. Um, and at this point, his personality changed to where he would be kind and gentle until he hit his head again! Six. Six. At a later point, and Guy became kind, sweet, and boyishly innocent and a perfect gentleman to the female members of the group. You know, I'm tempted to, uh, when I post this episode before it goes live, to say, take a drink every time Guy Gardner suffers brain damage. No, at this point, he's going to hit his head a, a, for a seventh time. I'm not exactly certain when that happens because he goes back to being the ass guy. Okay. Okay, so, so he's when that happens, seven I don't know. It's fine. Uh, Guy became romantically involved with his fellow leaguer Ice, um, even learning some rudimentary Norwegian because uh, she is she is from Norway. I mean, she is for all intents and purposes. What if Elsa from Frozen was a superhero? Yeah, before we even knew what Elsa was. Yeah, it, but it's the same mythos that they come mm-hmm. from. But he's actually callous to her and slow to admit his feelings. Although they basically stay together until the mid '90s, which is going to happen. I'm, I'm kind of skipping ahead on Ice because it's all I'm going to talk about mm-hmm. it. Um, they actually stay together until the mid to late 90s to when uh, Ice is eventually killed by Overmaster, which is something that happens, I think, in certain relationships. Am I right? I mean, if I had a nickel for every one of my exes that were killed by, by the Overmaster, Overmaster, then I'd have about 55 cents. <laughs> you have 55 exes? Hmm? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Uh, now, after how hey, what is your little black book look yeah. like? <laughs> and after how was reassigned to Sector Two Eight One Four, Gardner's response was to challenge Hal Jordan to a fight where the loser would have to quit the Green Lantern Corps. Do you think if you're a Green Lantern of Section Two Eight One Four that just every six months the Guardians are like, hey, 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 come in for a performance review? Yeah, just like every corporation. All right, you've been great. Mm-hmm. You're, you're crushing it. You've yeah, defeated a, uh-huh. lot, a lot of foes. Yeah, I'm Hal uh, Jordan. Uh-huh. No, you're, you can't be Hal. You have to be uh-huh. anyone except Hal Jordan. Why? 
Because we're going to replace you with Hal Jordan. Oh, okay. Oh, God. Sorry. I'm a pilot. All right. God, this goes better when it's not Hal. Let me bring it into the room. But do you think that, do you think every, like, it feels like Hal is, he's the Garden of Earth. He's not, do you think it's disappointing to be literally any other Green Lantern except Hal Jordan? Yep. Okay, they're so a giant space corporation. I bet you they replace them space, all left and right. They're space uh, AT and T. That's who mm-hmm, owns Warner exactly. Brothers at the time of this recording. Mm-hmm. Okay, so guys, like we're gonna fight, and the losers got to quit forever. Except uh, we know that won't happen. Guy Gardner lost, and he had to surrender his ring. That's what <laughs> yeah. happened. Did he do it? What do you mean? Did, did he, do he surrender it? his ring, or was he like screw off? Well, I mean, Hal Jordan sort of took it from him. Okay, I'm I'm kind of greasing those wheels. Sure, 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 sure. Now, before we get to the yellow ring period of Guy Gardner's life, I thought it would actually be fun to introduce you to some of Guy Gardner's brashest quotes oh, in comic books. I don't think he uh, because he's basically <laughs> lipped off to everyone in the DC universe. So actually, I'm going to give you a Guy Gardner quote, and I'd like you to identify or <laughs> oh guess God. who you think he's saying it to. Okay. Okay. I'm going to help you out here. None of them are to Dr. Fate. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's the first one. <laughs> okay. You know, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I'm not even certain what Guy Gardner should sound like. So he should have a Boston accent. Oh, dear God. No. Mm-hmm. Um, so here we go. Too late, bug. One soon to be corpse coming up. Now, who do you bug? think? Bug? Yes. Too late, bug. Ted Cord. You are correct. It was Guy talking to Blue Beetle in Justice League America, number 69. All right, I'm doing real good yeah, so far. Yeah, you're one for one. Okay, <laughs> here you go. Take your pick, burial or cremation. Uh, Obviously a villain. Yeah. But it's a villain that you know. I mean, that don't narrow the field too much. Mm-hmm. Dark side. Uh, incorrect. It's actually Doomsday. Oh, Doomsday. Doomsday. Okay. Okay. And then here's the other one. Don't wuss out, Boy Scout. Put this Superman. B- Let me finish the box. They quote, please. <laughs> Don't wuss out, Boy Scout. Put this Doomsday guy in a pine box, or I'll crawl off at of this gurney and kick both of your butts. Definitely Superman. Is is Superman? These are all these quotes are from the uh, Death of Superman storyline. Mm, so interesting. This was that was actually from Adventures of Superman number four ninety seven. Nice. Yeah. So now, if you liked uh, some of that fun, weird, non Boston accent speaking, <laughs> um, you get to enjoy this free to you podcast. Then maybe you should check out Geek History Lesson Extra, which is our exclusive podcast where we break down the topic of each week's GHL podcast a little bit more only on our Patreon over at patreon.com slash Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N. This week on that extra podcast, we're going to talk about where should Guy Gardner appear in live action? We're going to give some pitches, give some thoughts about where we think he should pop up, because I think we both think he should pop up. And if you know anything about our past pitch episodes, they get pretty good. Yeah, sometimes they come true. Yeah, we'll debate that. You'll get some extra and exclusive content only on Patreon, and you get sneak peeks to some of our comics only at patreon.com slash John. Thank you to all our patrons who keep the show going and uh, thank you for all the support over there. Thank you so much. Now, Guy eventually gets a solo series and in it, he had a yellow ring. Ashley, do mm. you know how he got that ring? He was fearful. Sinestra was like, hey, it didn't work with Hal Jordan. Maybe it'll work with this second rate Green Lantern. No, I have no idea how he got the yellow ring. Well, his yellow ring is the real yellow ring of Sinestro. It is actually Sinestro's original yellow ring because Sinestro at the time was dead. Oh. Now, Sinestro's ring was <laughs> kept inside the crypt created by the Guardians of the Universe. And using his Just League connections, Guy contacted the intergalactic bounty hunter Lobo. Oh, you boy, know, your favorite. He's the big, white, and black bounty hunter guy. Mm. Lobo here. He's you bastitches. Inexplicably Irish on Krypton. It is a little weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. The actor does a great job. By the but way. It's funny to hear of me. I know you all know this Lobo. Mm-hmm. I know you all know Tex Willerman. <laughs> Good old pal of mine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, anyways, me and Guy, I helped Guy into the crypt. So the two eventually found the crypt, and Guy discovered exactly what he came for. He battles the very spirit of Sinestro, because he was dead, to get the ring. And when Guy won, he donned the ring, and he discovered that it had no power. What? Because this yellow ring, this is pre-Sinestro core, mm. did not use a battery to recharge. Instead, it needed to be used against the power of Green Lanterns so that it could suck their residual energy to restore its power, which Guy Gardner accidentally discovered when he fought Kilowog. 
Mm. So another flaw of this ring was that the ring's language was Kuragarian, which is actually the That's na- Sinestro's language. It's Sinestro's native language. So actually, this ring would talk to him in Kuragarian, and Guy had no idea what this ring was telling him. Right, because previous to this, his Green Lantern ring had acted as a universal translator, so mm-hmm. he never had to learn alien languages. Yes. So Guy Gardner returned to Earth to pick a fight with Superman, but eventually rejoined the Justice League right at the time to battle the monster Doomsday, who is the big bony, scaly guy who kills Superman. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun fact, during the reign of Superman storyline, when four different versions of Superman appeared after Superman's death, Guy fought and later became allies with the last son of Krypton Superman, who was actually one of my favorites, the, the Eradicator. Eradicator. He uh, got cool sunglasses. He, he got gold sunglasses. Yep. Then Emerald Twilight happened. Coast City, Hal Jordan's hometown, was destroyed, and Hal asked the Guardians of the Universe to bring it back. They said no, and Hal went bonkers and murdered every Green Lantern in the universe. Can I Because I'm a pilot! Emerald Twilight is my favorite title for a Green Lantern book. It's I think it's such title. a beautiful title. So, eventually, as I said, this power-hungry Hal Jordan is killing Green Lanterns left and right. Mm-hmm. Going crazy. Mm-hmm. Ganthet, one of the oldest Guardians the first of the one universe. With an eight. Yes. Came to Guy Gardner to offer him the last Green Lantern power ring that was made before Hal Jordan basically murdered everybody on Oa, mm. the home planet. Gardner refused, which led Ganthet to decide to entrust it to Kyle Rayner, which you can learn more about because he's my favorite Green Lantern in uh, Geek Hedge Watson episode 64. Early days. Yeah. Now, Guy eventually led a, a group of heroes to Oa to find out what happened to the Green Lantern Corps. And guys and his team were ambushed and quickly defeated by Parallax. Now, Ashley, who is Parallax? Hal Jordan. Yes. It's actually the embodiment of fear in the universe. But at the time, it had possessed Guy, uh, excuse me, Hal, Hal Jordan. Jordan. And Hal Jordan had a badass Daryl Banks design costume and he looked so good. Oh, man. Daryl Banks. What a superstar. Oh, man. Action figure spotlight. I'm going to tell you right now. This has nothing to do with Guy Gardner. But there is an amazing DC Direct parallax action figure. When they started, when Green Lantern came back uh, for Green Lantern Rebirth, they made a parallax action figure. And it is a holy grail of Jason's. I have never been able to find this action figure. If you have a lead, send us a link. Please do. Please do. Everybody will just send me email links. It's fine. Um, so, Guy was defeated by Parallax. And Hal defeated Gardner and destroyed his yellow ring. Dun, 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 dun. Now, Ashley. Yes. Guy awoke in a hospital. With more brain damage? After spending three weeks after his eighth Ooh. coma. His eighth Head injury. As somebody who listens to a lot of true crime and murder podcasts, uh, he should be a full-blown serial killer by this point. Yes. It usually takes about three too many hits to the head before that happens. Well, this may explain a later storyline with, with Guy, actually. So Guy eventually, <laughs> okay. he was like, I got to find a new way to acquire power. Uh-huh. So he eventually found new powers embedded deep in the Naba jungle in the Amazon. Upon exploring an ancient temple... Guy finds a chalice filled with a strange liquid, and he does what anybody would do when you see a strange liquid in an old temple. You drink it. (laughs) Okay. This caused Guy to undergo a radical transformation, and this water discovered and activated his inactive DNA from the Voldarian aliens that I mentioned in the Tencent origin. He could suddenly and painfully change his body into a myriad of weapons. And as he transformed, he grew to a massive seven feet and became covered in ritualistic Voldarian tattoos. He became known as Warrior. And this is when the Guy Gardner solo title was redonned to Guy Gardner Warrior. And um, this sounds scary. This is a period. uh, Actually, you probably should share a picture of Guy Gardner Warrior. uh, Making a note. With all the ritualistic red tattoos. Oh, I've seen the covers. It is bonkers. It is bonkers crazy. And this period of time is best forgotten. So that's why I'm just going to move along. So Guy Gardner during this time, he actually kept cropping up as a recurring character in Kyle Rayner's Green Lantern series. That is true. Where I think this is so awesome. He opened a Planet Hollywood type restaurant called Warriors that was dedicated to the Green Lanterns. Um, I'm going to be honest. I also love this detail. I think if uh, 
DC Comics really wanted to make some money, they would have a version of this on their backlot tour. Sure. Or the yeah. one from Kingdom Come. It was also during this time that he was thought killed during the Our Worlds at War crossover. Hey. But he was actually later discovered to be trapped in a pocket of hell called the Gorge in the DC country of Polakistan. Boo. Yes. So Guy Gardner got tortured again. Probably got his ninth head injury. Oh, my God. Did we get into triple digits mm-hmm. with these head injuries? Uh, we, I don't know. A uh, guy next appeared prominently in Green Lantern Rebirth in 2005, which is a miniseries by Jeff Johns and Ethan Van Scriver, where his Voldarian DNA is strangely overwritten by his human DNA when Parallax, the entity, possesses Gardner and several Green Lanterns. Hal Jordan's ring splits in two and Gardner's ring is restored to him and a bunch of other weird stuff is retconned away. Now, Parallax, the Entity is defeated by the combined effort of all five active Green Lanterns, uh, including Guy Gardner. Excuse me, all four active Green Lanterns at the time. That was a misread on my part. That's okay. The Gardeners, I'm um, excuse me, the Guardians, which should be called the Gardeners. <laughs> the Gardeners. <laughs> they selected Guy Gardner as one of their senior officers and made him an honor guard for the new Green Lantern Corps because all the guard, gar- remember the Green, all the Green Lanterns were killed, all the Guardians were killed. So there is a, there's not a lot of Green Lanterns in the universe, and he. T- takes charge in the Green Lantern Corps Recharge miniseries as one of the three Green Lantern instructors on OA to train all the new uh, Green Lanterns. Then we get to Infinite Crisis. Hey. Ashley, what's Infinite Crisis? So Superboy Rhyme comes back to life and he's real mad. So he punches a hole in the universe and Alexander Luther's there. Who's Superboy Prime though? He's the Superboy from our Earth because our Earth is Earth Prime. That's right. He's a remnant from Crisis on Infinite Earths, yeah. which we talked about earlier in this lesson. Now, a guy takes over the main Green Lantern army, and he leads the core in defense of Oa against Superboy Prime, creating a wall of energy to slow the rampaging teen and calling a Code 54, which is the authorization of the use of extreme and lethal force against an enemy for the Green Lantern Corps. Guy supervises the final capture and imprisonment of Superboy Prime, locked him in a red sun eater cage which of course takes away his powers and i love the phrase sun eater i know yeah. it's really silly sci-fi nonsense but i just love the way it sounds mm-hmm. now also after infinite crisis dc comics skipped all of their comic books ahead one year later and this is a one year later storyline called 52 now dc also published a bunch of miniseries that told us what happened mm-hmm. in some of the other stuff mm-hmm. one of these miniseries mm-hmm. is a miniseries called ion now, yeah. in this, this is a Kyle Rayner series. Ion um, is actually the embodiment of Will. Like, it is a spiritual creature that represents Will in the universe. Mm-hmm. Like, Parallax represents fear. fear. Now, Ion bonded with Kyle Rayner during this miniseries. And this led Kyle to have the ability to travel the new and recently created new DC multiverse of the 52 universes. Well, look, isn't that convenient? Yes. He included, he interacted with characters and several heroes from the Tangent universe, including the Tangent Green Lantern. Now, you might be wondering, how does Guy fit into this? I'm getting there. But first, Ashley, Mm -hmm. do you know what the DC Tangent universe is? Oh, boy. I know that you have two copies of the book. I have every trade they've ever made of the Tangent universe. I don't. I've not read them. Okay. Is this Iron Lantern? No. Okay, then no, I don't know. That's amalgam. In the 90s, DC used to publish one-shots during their fifth week. Actually, as a person Uh who worked in a comic book shop, can you explain to our listeners what a fifth week is in case they don't know? Yes. So typically a month has four weeks. When there is a fifth week, that means there is a fifth Wednesday. New comic books, if you aren't familiar, come out on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. New prose books come out on Tuesday. New movies come out on Friday. So if there is a fifth week, Typically, books come out the same week every month. So Spider-Man always comes out the first week. Batman always comes out the second week. Jupiter Jet always comes out the third week. Things like that. They don't tend to move them around too much in scheduling. So that means the when a fifth week crops up, maybe three times, two times a year. I think it's like four times a year, I think, isn't it? In a On a leap year, there's oh, usually okay. got it, got four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's usually closer to three. Um just depends on the year. Time is weird, kids. So fifth week, there's typically nothing scheduled. So you'll see a lot of things like annuals or a lot of collections. Fifth weeks are weird. So actually in the 90s and the early aughts, publishers made a concerted effort to have cool stuff to come out on mm-hmm. fifth weeks because fifth weeks can sometimes... So where both the amalgam events happen. Yes. Can sometimes feel like 
throwaway. Yes. They can kind of feel like they, they have don't, become they don't now. matter. Yeah. And, and it was cool when they matter or where then there was the potential that something cool would come out. So apparently Tangent was a part so of that. So Tangent is one of the fifth week 90s events. And Tangent actually was two of them. It was in 97 and 98. The first time it appeared, this was where they gave Dan Jurgens, a uh, luminary creator, the ability to take the names of the DC Universe's characters and do whatever he wanted with them. So he made Nightwing oh, yes. a a like 60s spy organization. Uh the Atom became the most powerful hero in the D- in this universe. Um the Green Lantern became like a horror book with this woman who would carry around this Green Lantern and bring dead people to life. Now, what does this have to do with Guy? See, Kyle visited the Tangent Universe and he actually battled the Tangent Green Lantern and he kept the Tangent Green Lantern's power battery, the actual Tangent Green Lantern. Okay. And when he brought it back to the DC Universe, he knew it was a super powerful object and he left it to one person that he could trust, Guy Gardner. So mm-hmm. Guy Gardner in his apartment on Oa has the Tangent Green Lantern. Can I ask you a question? And if you don't know, it's okay. That's fine. Is the are the Tangent characters, do they live on their own Earth in the multiverse? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Yes, okay. they do. I don't remember what. That's okay. I remember when they... Um, the Multiversity came out, that great uh, series about the multiverse that Jason loves, written by Grant mm-hmm. Morrison, uh, that there was like a guidebook that came along with it and kind of showed who lived on what Earth, because one of them is all Fawcett comics, and that's all Captain Marvel, because I remember you pointing... They are Earth-9. Thank you. Oh, which in... They are Earth-9 now. Which in the TV mm-hmm. continuity is where the DC Universe shows live, mm-hmm. Titans and Doom Patrol yep. and Swamp Thing. Great. Uh, thank you for letting me uh, derail you. Because yes. I remember you describing the female Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. I look like I will say this. The tangent books aren't they aren't amazing, but like they have. I love cool the ideas. I, yeah, they have a lot of cool ideas. I love the idea like in their in their universe, the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1963 happened and Russia bombed Florida. Oof. So like Florida is a nuclear wasteland and that has affected American history going forward. And sure. actually, that is the event that creates all the superheroes in the Tangent universe. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I like an alternate history take on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of cool. Um, so soon after this, Guy is re- reunited with a resurrected Ice. And although he gets back together with her, he abandons her to go fully serve the Green Lanterns and open a bar on Oa. I kind of like the idea that he's a bar owner. That fits for mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. Then Blackest Night happens. Uh, this is the event where all the Black Lanterns, uh, there's Black Rings all across the universe and it brings all the dead heroes back to uh, life. And don't forget, guys, we were doing Blackest Night Club over on Patreon. If you want to go check that out. Um, Guy and Kyle Rayner are opposed to the Guardian's decision to execute all Sinestro Corps members in their prison cells. And they unsuccessfully convince the... Alpha Lanterns and the Guardians to stay away from this path. And they're actually, because of this, they are reassigned to Earth. They later try to return to Oa and fail to repel an invasion of a swarm of black rings, which leads to Oa's Lantern Crypt, where all the corpses of fallen lanterns are reanimated as black lanterns. In the ensuing conflict, Guy is forced to crush the body of the insectoid Bzzd, which is a Green Lantern, and then is impaled through the leg by other dead Green Lantern, Kihan. But following the death of Kyle Rayner, spoilers! Oh no, my BB! Guy fly, flies into a rage and is transformed and given a red lantern. Mm-hmm. He is now powered by both his green and red power rings at the same time. And Guy seeks vengeance against the Black Lanterns for killing his pal, uh, Kyle. And he's able to actually destroy them very easily because he has two different light sources. Mm-hmm. Um, he later turns his murderous rage on his former friends before Mogo purges the red lantern rage from him. And then he is told only the blue lantern can cure him completely. And eventually he is led into, uh, you know, confronting the Necron, the final Black Lantern battle on Earth. Mocha's now, so cool. Yes. Now, some of this gets swept under the rug when the new 52 sweeps into town and retcons Guy to being the middle child of a family from Baltimore. And all, all of his family basically served as police officers now, so he follows in their footsteps. In this continuity, he's the second human to be chosen by a Green Lantern ring, and this was prompted by um, now Guy rescues his older brother, who is now named Gerard, uh, from a police shootout. 
about. Um, and also in this relationship, his retcon is that he actually still talks to his dad, who is now named Ebenezer. Um, and Instead he, of Roland? <laughs> yep. And it took a bullet and now the job he was forced to retire. So mm-hmm. actually, just real quick, very briefly, what is the New 52? Barry Allen misses mommy, so he ran back in time and reset the universe after Flashpoint. And everyone had only been superheroes for five years, except the ones Jeff Johns was writing and Batman. And everyone got more lines on their costumes. Yeah, no, in the new 52, Guy basically becomes a Red Lantern full time. Um, initially, Guy appeared to be the one Earth Green Lantern that the Guardians still replied on. But having expelled Hal out of the Green Lantern Corps after the War of Green Lanterns event and expelling Kyle for working with other color ring welders. And it's a they, little racist there, and guys. And they expelled John Stewart for being put on trial for killing another lantern. So Guy was actually placed into the cast of the Red Lantern series where he was sent there by Hal Jordan to join the Red Lanterns undercover. He defeats Atrocitus, who is the leader of the Red Lanterns, and takes command of that group. It is revealed that part of his decision to join the Red Lanterns is feeling as if he never really fit in as a Green Lantern because of his rage. Mm. And as a Red Lantern, Gardner manages to keep his rage in check, successfully leading most of the Red Lanterns, and Atrocitus leads a splinter Red Lantern group, which allows new Red Rings to cause murderous justice beige while murderous justice based rampages continue. Um, after joining with the Green Lanterns to defeat the cosmic terrorist Relic, Hal promises to give the Red Lanterns a sector for their own to watch over. And unwittingly, they kind of trick him into making that sector 2814, which is where oh Earth boy. resides. <laughs> so Guy Gardner and the Red Lanterns are in charge of guarding Earth for a while. And then DC Rebirth swoops in, which is this, you know, basically this soft reboot of the DC universe. Wally West comes back to yep, life. Yeah, Wally West comes back to life. It changes Guy's backstory again, bringing back the abuse from his alcoholic father. And their fights draw the attention of the Sinestro Corps. And actually, fun fact, his dad's name is changed back to Roland during the DC Rebirth. Rebirth. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end this lesson because there, there's two things to learn about. It's that Guy Gardner is um, the owner of an abusive father and grievous head wounds. I keep thinking of the clip from Aladdin where the genie is trying to save Aladdin from evil Jafar because uh, Aladdin has said some quip and he's like, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He said one too many hits with the snake. Oh, yeah. Like I just keep thinking about that every time guy gets hit in the head again. Nice. All right. Let's go into the recommended reading, Ashley. The recommended reading is where if you have enjoyed our humorous take on Guy Gardner and you are interested in this weird character and you want to know some more about it, you head on over to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. Professor Jason is going to recommend some supplementary material for you to pick up. You click on the widget. Amazon brings it to your house for free. And a little bit of support comes back to the Mind University at no extra cost to you so we can start building our own Red Lantern Corps here on campus. Look, none of these are going to be the Guy Gardner solo series. One, because it's not great. Two, because it hasn't really been collected either. Fair, 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 fair. The first choice is Green Lantern Corps Recharge. This is the series right after Green Lantern Rebirth. This is where Guy and this is where Guy, Kyle and John are teamed up and they're training lanterns. And it's cool. My second choice is Red Lanterns Volume 4, Blood Brothers. This is where Guy takes charge of the uh, Red Lanterns. And also, this is where Guy changes his look for the first time in years as writer Charles Soule gives him um, a Fu Manchu. Yeah. Yeah, And gives him a haircut, too. He loses the bowl cut. And my third choice is a collection of Justice League International Volume 1. They have a trade of this. It's like the first 10 issues. It's really, really worth reading. All right, Ashley. Going to go into the discussion. Well, we're going to discuss stuff. Yeah. What purpose do you think Guy serves in the Green Lantern Corps, Green Lantern mythos? Because he's a character they keep bringing back. Mm -hmm. And they've even retconned him into original Green Lantern history. I mean, what do you think from this lesson? Like, Mm -hmm. because I didn't like Guy when I first met him, Mm -hmm. but I now have a strong appreciation for him. So I I mentioned this at the top and I, 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 did it with what I hoped was humor that I, I don't care for guy, but I really think, especially if you just condense the green lanterns down to the human green lanterns. Yep. Even though there are too many green lanterns, uh, cause now there's eight, uh, there's way too many green lanterns. What I think is genius is if you look at all of them and you look at them through the lens of will, which you must, because a Green Lantern is known and driven by their will. They show the different ways that will can personify in a person. And Guy, to me, represents the 
anger driven will. So this is a real fantasy trope and it's a real YA trope that a character has had a tough upbringing and they said, I don't feel anything. I'm just angry because I know what rage is and rage drives me. And that's that's what Guy is. Guy is all hard edges. He's all machismo. He's all big talk and hard fists. But it's because... With that artifice, he's been able to muscle his way through these tough things in his life. So I think Guy is a representation of Will through the lens of a cactus. Okay. Like he's spiky and mean on the outside, but he has a good heart and he's always trying. He's honestly trying his best. He's just not good at it. Mm -hmm. Like Guy Gardner might objectively be a better person than Hal Jordan. Mm -hmm. You know, Hal Jordan like takes cheats on his buddies girls while they're in a tough jam instead of going to save them you know he went to jail like uh guy guy's trying to do good but he's just not great at it and i think that's what he adds and i think because the green lanterns in some ways are held up in a deified position um particularly when you get to kyle who's my favorite green lantern he's the best um But Guy kind of grounds them and brings them back to Earth. And I think when he's employed well, I think the best Guy Gardner is in the Bwahaha Justice League. Mm -hmm. And I think it's in Green Lantern, the animated series. Yes. Because they use him as a punchline. And in the context of that show, and they pair him up with Chip, it really works. And Mm -hmm. that's what I think he adds to the mythos. And then also, if you're looking at it, you want to go to the editor brain and the publisher brain from a sales point of view. He brings in the same group of people who love Lobo. Yep. Um, and who love Venom. He is appealing to a very specific demographic yeah, as well. Yeah, totally. Do you have any other thoughts about sort of his... No, he's the drill sergeant. Yeah. That's exactly who he is. He's the drill sergeant at Green Lantern. That's exactly who he is. Great. Yeah. All right, now to the teaching tweet. Where? I can't believe Professor Jason remembered this. I did it this time. In 140 characters or less, he is going to sum up everything he just taught you about Guy Gardner. I'm so proud. Guy Gardner. He's the SH asterisk T kicker of the DC universe, (laughs) at least until he gets hit on the head again and falls into a coma. Oh, funny and sad. Yes. Just like Guy Gardner. And now we're going to go to the honor roll. Where if you go to Apple Podcasts and you leave us a five-star review, we'll read whatever you write. Also, if you are an international person, because we cannot access international Apple Podcasts, if you take a screenshot of it and email it to geekhistorylesson at gmail.com, we will very, very happily fold you into the fray. I'm looking at you, Kazakhstan. Let me know who's listening. I don't know if we have any listeners in Kazakhstan. I bet we have one. Okay. I mean, Kazakh- I, I mean I, this is going to show my ignorance. Is Kazakhstan still a country? Isn't it? I don't know. I will Google it. I kind of think we need to find this out, Ashley. Well, you Wait. read the first one and I'll tell you. Hold on. We're going to figure this out. This is the, I think it does stop the podcaster. Kazakhstan. Yes, it is. Wow. Hey. Good on you. Um, I think they're in the World Junior Hockey Championships. I apologize. Regularly. I hope we have listeners of Kazakhstan because that'd be cool. All right. The first person that is going to join the honor roll is some guy five, four, three, who said, I stumbled across Geek History Lesson when I was randomly looking up information on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and found their episodes. What I found was the most fun and informative podcast on everything I love. I find my work days go much faster when I have a couple of episodes of Geek History Lesson keeping me company. Thank you, Jason and Ashley. Highly recommended. Wow. That's awesome. I'm glad glad we're able to help your work day. Some guy five, four, three. The next person to join the honor roll is Kyle MJ 6977 who says the hosts have great chemistry and convey a shared passion for comics, superheroes and geek culture in general. Kudos. I think this podcast would definitely be Tex Willerman approved. Nice. <laughs> well, you know, God, you know, I, I say this Tex Willerman. I have popped into the podcast. Yeah, I heard uh, I heard that this listener really likes you. Yeah. Uh, well, Kyle MJ, you have a definite job. At the Austin Piggly Wiggler, the Tex Willerman Piggly Wiggler, you can uh, put out my packages of crackers any day. You can email your resume to geekhistorylesson at gmail.com and we'll be sure to pass it. I will chance. not look at it. <laughs> I only read <laughs> Louis L'Amour novels. Is he a cowboy writer? Oh, he is. Yes. What about uh, Dalton Wilcox? Uh, Dalton Wilcox is, I think he is a liar <laughs> and a cheat. And he owes me 50 bucks. If anyways, he'd like to come on the I podcast need to, and defend himself. I, need, I would love to have Dalton Wilcox on the podcast. So anyways, I, we need to get to the Yeah, we have one more. Yet. So thank you for stopping by. All right. We'll I'm tell gonna, Kurt that I'm going to unplug this wire. 
I had Sarah. I called on Sarah on my old timey phone. I said, click, 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 get me on a geek history lesson. Plug, Who's plug. Sarah? Sarah, she's the uh, operator for Mayberry. Okay, because she's definitely not your wife. No, that's Judy. That's right. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to see you later. Bye, Tex. Click, click. Uh, the third person to join <laughs> is the... <laughs> Gingy92. Cute. Gingy92. He says, I love being able to pop up, pop on your podcast and learn so much in about an hour. I have, I, we say this now as we're like over an hour, definitely. And they say, I never listened to podcasts before I discovered Geek History Lesson. Thanks for being great. That's such an honor. Yep. Thank you so I'm much. Glad. So, Gingy92, Kyle MJ6977, and some guy 543 thank you so much for leaving us five stars. And if you want to be like them, you can literally write everything, anything you want. Give us five stars. We'll read it on the show. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and download us on iTunes. And also listen to us on Spotify, Stitcher, and all the places you can find podcasts. Um, Ashley, if they want to suggest a future lesson, just like... If they want to be as cool as, as our TA, As Katie Campbell, Eric Oberholzer and at Hinkleman Mitch. Where can they do that? They can do that at geekhistorylesson.com, facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, or on Twitter at GHL Podcast. There's a bunch of ways to contact us in all yes. those places. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jawin, J A W I I N, and follow Ashley on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. Um, and please go follow us, guys. I look, I know there are some of you in Kazakhstan that listen to this. And I expect every one of you to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. I also expect you to make yourself known because we need a place to stay if we come visit. <laughs> That's right. Uh, hashtag stick around. That's the part of the podcast where we make sure you stuck through the plugs. And you can, if you like it, you can hashtag stick around on Twitter. Ashley. Yo. Whole bunch of Earth Green Lanterns. Too many. There's 92 of them. Uh-huh. Who is Guy's best partner? Now, if you feel that's not a Green Lantern... That's fine. Who is Guy Gardner's? Who is Guy Gardner the best when he's partnered with? For me, it's a Green Lantern. Is it John? No, it's actually Kyle. Interesting. Like him and Kyle actually complement each other very well because they're opposites. Like Kyle is the artsy, open minded guy, and Guy is the drink a beer and watch the game guy. Uh, but they actually work really well together. It's really tough because I'm just not super familiar with Guy. Mm -hmm. Um, I can tell you the character I like seeing him written with most. Who's that? I really like Guy against Batman. Oh, that's funny. Because they don't like each other. They hate each other. I mean, it's there's a grudging respect, of course. But because Batman is a great leader, he's a great tactician, he's a hard ass, and he is a leader of men and, and women and non-binary individuals. But he's kind of everything Guy wants to be. And he's annoyed because Guy fronts with him. And then Guy is annoyed because he can't figure out why Batman is better than him. And he, like, yeah, it's funny that he punches him in the face. That's good for a laugh. But I think from a writing perspective, I think pairing them against each other is very interesting. It's an interesting pick. Yeah, and I really like that pick. You. And that's also a perfect pick to end the podcast because this has been Geek History Lesson. And I have been Jason. Don't let me fall into a coma. In I have been Ashley Victoria Robinson and then Professor Jason before you suffer a head injury. Would you please dismiss the class? Class is... Oh, no, a truck! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs>